All right, thank you for joining me on Backside Banter, another week, another great interview. Today I'm joined by exercise writer and assistant trainer for the Mandela team, Taylor Canberra. Taylor, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. Um, so let's get started. You know, I know a little bit about your background. I believe your dad was an outrider at Bay Meadows. And then I'd love to hear how you guys kind of got involved in horse racing. Yeah, he, he outrode all the Northern California circuit, uh, Bay Meadows, Golden Gate, and all the fairs. Um, I grew up in Pleasanton, which we had a training facility there. Um, before school every day, starting from first grade, I'd go to the track. Um, and it, that's where it all started, was just going there, being with my dad and being around the horses. Very cool. And then I know you kind of have a rodeo background, bucking Broncos, I believe. Um, I'd love to hear yeah. a little bit more about that. Um, well, I started riding bulls when I was a little younger, 15, 16, um, and then started riding bucking horses when I was 17. Uh, started riding professionally when I was 18, did that for about a year and a half. Um, and it was kind of hard on my body. So I decided it was better for me to get back into the horse racing. Yeah. How, I mean, I guess, how do you even compare the two, right? One is bucking a Bronco and then the horses. Um, I mean, yeah. the wear and tear body must have been insane. So then is that ultimately the decision you made the wear and tear on your body is then, okay, I'll go back into horse racing. Yeah. Um, horse racing is something that I always wanted, you know, I always wanted to train horses. So, you know, I, I realized that I wasn't going to be able to do the things that I wanted to do in the rodeo industry, which is be a world champion. You know, I'm just way too big. Um, and uh, so you know, I made the decision to go back and do what I love to do, which is work with racehorses. So I, I heard that you did get started on the Southern California circuit a bit, and I believe you did work with our very own Joe Moran, California racing manager and the Andy Mathis barn. Is that correct? I did. I worked with, that's where I met Joe. Yes. Okay. I'm sure you guys have plenty of memories and fun stories mm -hmm. to talk about. So then how did that transition happen for you to work for Hall of Fame trainer, Richard Mandela? Um, well, I was working for Andy and after Delmar was over, he went back up to Golden Gate and i was without a job and walking around looking uh to do anything really i mean i wanted to be a gal boy but you know it's kind of hard to find a job being six two <laughs> um so I, I walked around for literally about two weeks until finally richard said you give me a chance and put me on he asked me if i could ride nasty colts i said i could ride anything you got and he put me on a few of his naughty ones and it skyrocketed from there, and I'm very grateful for him for it. Yeah, I mean, you went from bucking Broncos. You're like, yeah, I'll take the, the crazy <laughs> person in my Whatever life. You got. Exactly. I mean, yeah. I'm sure it's amazing to work with him every day, but can you kind of explain what that process is like working with someone like Richard Mandela, a resume like that? What is it like to work with him every day? Um, it's definitely a learning experience. I learn something new every day there, and uh, he's – He's very hard on me, but I definitely need it. And I thank him for it every day. He's, he's like a father figure to me. Um, he, he's so great though. He, he, he's true, true horsemanship there. And um, I'm definitely gonna use a lot of the stuff that I learned there in my future when I decide to start training horses on my own. That's amazing. And because of being in the Mandela Barn, I know you've been able to work with such amazing horses. I know one comes to mind, Omaha Beach. Mm -hmm. You were with him day in and day out. You rode him every morning on the track. What was that experience like being able to work with him right from the beginning and then a ride of the lifetime, I would assume, you know, you guys got to travel together. And then, of course, you know, he was supposed to run the Kentucky Derby, didn't get to. Same with the Pegasus. So can you kind of explain to me what that roller coaster situation was like? It was certainly a roller coaster um, with the not getting a run and, and the Pegasus and the Derby, but uh, it was a dream come true. He was an absolute class act. Didn't matter what what track we went to, what we were doing. He was he was certainly a horse of a lifetime. Yeah, um, it was a dream come true, though. I mean, for a kid like me coming from where I came from, a small little track just to be able to be around a horse like that, let alone gallop one, um, truly is a, a dream come true. 
And there has, I mean, United and Bombard. I mean, there's been other Breeders' Cup horses, but he, he's definitely one that will always be set apart from, from those ones. I'm sure. I mean, of course, we have to talk about a few of the My Race Horse horses. This is a My uh -huh. Race Horse show. So I know you have a soft spot for Tis Magician specifically. I know you're his usual exercise rider. Can you kind of talk to me about what it's like being his buddy? Yeah, he's he's a really cool dude. I do have a soft spot for him. Um, he's he's maturing all the time. He's getting bigger and stronger, and uh, I'm excited to see him run. Uh, what is it next week? He's got that big stake coming up, and he's doing well. Looking for a big one there. I'm sure he has the same kind of love for you as well. I know you guys traveled all the way to Dubai together last year, yeah. so. I know you're his little confidant, so definitely love to see that, and everyone enjoys it. Laneway, I know Moonlight Dora, there's a few others to talk about. Um, you know, do you have any other kind of soft spot for the other horses, or is it mainly Tis the Magician? He's, he's definitely my favorite, my racehorse horse, but I love them all. I mean, Moonlight Dora, it's hard not to love her. She's so small, but she's got a heart of gold, um, tries it every time. Uh, Nate Smith, the first timer, that ran a few weeks ago. He, he, he's maturing all the time, and and I'm sure he's going to be all right. Uh, who else do we have for you guys? I heard you used um, to get on Laneway. Is that correct? Yeah, I have been on Laneway quite a few times. He's he's just the coolest dude too. He just does whatever you want to do. He's just here for here for a good time. Love to hear that. Well, Taylor, mm -hmm. I I think that's all I have to ask you today. Um, is there any kind of note you can give to our My Race Horse owners as a parting gift on this show? Um, words of wisdom, perhaps. Words of wisdom. <laughs> um, putting I you on the spot. I, <laughs> mm, well, we surely appreciate you guys. I know it's a not an easy thing what you guys have done with this sport, but um, we sure do appreciate you. <laughs> Well, perfect. I don't think anything else has to be said, and we love working with you guys as well. And so, like you said, really excited to see Tis the Magician next weekend, or yeah, next weekend in the Big Cap. So, Taylor, thank you for all you do and for taking care of our horses really well. Uh, we love all the updates and, you know, to much success in your future. Thank you so much, Anna. Thank you. Bye. Don't miss any of the action from the My Race Horse Stable. Subscribe today.